You were shaking your head there for a bit, Chris Canny. Were you surprised by these comments? Yeah, I was. And I thought that was a sucker move by the guys in the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room talking about Le'Veon Bell that way. There's an unwritten code amongst players that you don't talk about a guy negatively when he's trying to do his business with the organization. You don't question his loyalty to his teammates, and you don't question his passion for the game. You can't characterize Lev Bell based on the move that him and his agent, his agent are trying to employ in order to get him that long-term financial security from the organization. Organization. And when you come out and you say things like that, you weaken his position with the organization. Le'Veon Bell, they sent a message loud and clear last year when they franchise tagged him. He didn't show up until week one of the regular season. Apparently, Kevin Colbert, the GM, didn't get the message. And so they thought that Lev Bell would show up again week one of this season. But he's actually doing something which I think is in his best interest. He's making it making it hurt for the organization. And that's the only way as a player that you can get their attention and hopefully get the money that you're looking for. Listen, I uh, first of all, I echo that entirely. Second of all, this it cannot be a one-way street in these things. It cannot simply be that the the player deals with the negative impacts of the franchise tag, which is no long-term security, and that the team has no negative impact whatsoever. Last year, he showed up, he skipped training camp, but he was still ready for week one. Now, he didn't play very well the first month of the season, but he was ready. This year, he didn't want to be franchised. He just wanted a new contract for three years. This year, he finally, he once again gets franchise tagged, so now he's waiting longer. Now, I think Le Le'Veon Bell is going to show up Saturday. That'd be my guess. My guess is he is not going to miss out on those $855,000 game checks. So what he's going to do is have the least amount of work this year for the most amount of money, which would mean show up Saturday around 3 o'clock to where he still gets his money, but he cannot play Sunday. So he has a 15-game season instead of a 16-game season. I understand the players being frustrated with him. I understand a veteran player who thinks this is my last best chance to win a Super Bowl being disappointed. I do not understand verbalizing that publicly and undercutting your teammate and your union brother's negotiating power. I don't get that. I think that works against everybody. The, the, the rising tide raises all salary mm -hmm. boats. And so Ramon Foster saying, I love it. Everyone's about get get their money. Well, you clearly don't love it. Like, And this is, all of this could have been fixed by El Bell showing up. It also could have been fixed by them coming to a contract agreement months ago. And I didn't hear these players going after Kevin Colbert, going after the Steelers for not getting that done then. Now, the reason why the, the offensive linemen are upset is because the information that L. Bell told them. That part right there you guys seem to be missing. Because no one said anything about L. Bell's contract the last couple years. None of the players said anything. A.B. said a little bit of something. But you haven't heard him say anything. The reason why they're starting to say stuff is because L. Bell told them that he would be there on Wednesday. Now, somewhere along the line, away, him and his agent, and I don't know why his agent's speaking on his behalf, he's been tweeting, speaking for the last couple of years. He should be speaking on that. Agent shouldn't be speaking on the radio, speaking for him. His contract's not with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He works for, for L. Bell. So his agent didn't do him any favors. Well, L. Bell was handling all his statements himself. And now, all of a sudden, he turned it over to his agent. But also, the word that he gave his teammates was that I'll be there on Wednesday. That's the only reason why guys speak out like that. Do you, do you agree with that or you disagree with I, that? I, I understand where you're coming from, but here's what I'll say to that, CC. You know the situation that Lev Bell is in. Even if I communicated that to you as a guy that's away from the team right now, why would you share that information with the media? Because now it looks like the organization... Because on, the organization, Monday, on Monday, when he tweeted out there was going to be fake news about him reporting, Pouncey said, and I've been knowing Pouncey since he was 15 years old, Pouncey wouldn't say that he'll be here Wednesday unless L. Bell told him that. But look what that does to L. Bell with the organization. It weakens his leverage because the organization is not scared of him actually missing well, games. Well, listen, let me tell y'all something. Leverage is gone. When I put the franchise tag on you, your leverage is gone. Just peekaboo, you're not going to scare me, all right? <laughs> all right, you're sitting at home. The Pittsburgh Steelers won more Super Bowl like you getting ready to threaten them. We know what's getting ready to happen. They're going to play one more year with him, and then they're going to let him be a, an unrestricted free agent. Now, he's going to be able to say, you know something? You guys really hurt my position because I only made $27 million the last two years as the highest-paid running back, which is 
it's way more than what the market value is until Todd Gurley's new deal. Where, are we on the same page? Of course, so far? we're on the same page. But that, but hold on. This and you're. I agree with you. See that L. Bell potentially made a mistake in telling his teammates something and not coming through on that. Like I, I think if you have friends, colleagues, whomever, you should not mislead them. That's just a general principle rule. I can agree with you on that point. But I, I, it just bothers me to my core that when we talk about these things, the onus is always on the players. What about the Pittsburgh Steelers who have the, o- they're the only team in the league with this philosophy? We will not guarantee one dollar. This is not that- about the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. That ship has sailed, man. They are not going to give them a long-term contract. Won't y'all realize that? I know. I'm, I'm with you on that one, CC. They're, they're not, not, not going to pay him, but here's what I would say. I said it yesterday with Ozzie Newsom. 53 independent contractors on that team. Right now, Lev Bell has got to do what's in the best interest of his business. And if I know that the Steelers aren't going to give me a long-term contract, then I'm not going to incur the risk of injury told trying to go into hey, the free guys, agency. Listen, I'm not going to do what I did last year. I don't know. I might be out the first 10 games. And then the offensive lineman can move on with the speaking point and trying to take care of him. Because you guys have this image of L. Bell, but his teammates really know who he is. And to me, El Bell is a selfish guy. He has shown that he is selfish. And right now, because his teammates, they had enough of it because he made them look bad. When they said you'll be here on Wednesday and they got to work on Wednesday and he wasn't there, they, their word wasn't any good. So El Bell made them look bad. And neither one of y'all have mentioned that. No, it, All right? Because let me tell you something. When teams get together, when your Super Bowl team gets back together, you know who gets together? Not the front office and the damn coaches. <laughs> it's me all. and you yep. because we did that work together. Yep. And there's accountability that you and I got that we know people on the street don't have. And when I tell you something, bro, you know you got my word. And that's where El Bell messed up in this. The guys that do the work with him, he told them something and did something else. See, and I and it's not that I'm disregarding that point. I conceded that point. I recognized he made a misstep there. But to use a cliche everyone knows, two wrongs don't make a right. Yep. Because El Bell screwed up in telling them something and doing something else does not justify multiple teammates crushing him. One guy saying, listen, uh, I think it was Pouncey who said, new star born every day in this league. It is. We didn't know who Kareem was. It's true. Okay, that's (laughs) all. You're correct. It It is true. They have a a contract right in front of him, Nick, that says, will you take this 14 million? Mm -hmm. He decided that not only what I told you, Pouncey, is not accurate, all right? But that money right there, I'm not willing to go to work for. So Pouncey said, hey, man, I got to go to work. I got my contract signed, so I don't have a choice. I can't defend you anymore because what you told me was not true. You don't have to defend the guy, but you also don't have to crush him. Yeah. There's a there's That's a middle ground Listen, between. I done done a million interviews, and at some point, all right, you are a sum of your decisions and things that you have done or said. When your agent is on the radio talking about, I don't know if he's going to be there for the first 10 weeks, and I'm sitting there in the locker room thinking he's going to come through the door anytime. All right, now it's time for me to be able to, oh, I I need to be able to say what the truth is here. I'm done with this, and I got a job to do, because regardless if he comes or not, my work is still the same. Chris, has irreparable damage been done? Can he come back into this locker room knowing what his offensive line who blocks for him has already said, and they'd be like, all right, we're good now, and is there, has it too much done? No, it won't be the same anymore, Jenna. This this thing has gotten to a point now where it's so adversarial, it's so ugly, between not only Le'Veon Bell and the organization, but now between he and his teammates, and I don't know that the locker room is going to embrace him the same way that they did earlier in his career. I think this is a situation where Lev Bell is, is probably in line for a divorce from the Pittsburgh Steelers. All righty then. Divorce ain't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First, or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.